Hi, I am JP Amit from TrueChip CXL team. Here at TrueChip, we have developed CXL 3.0 and CXL switch. I am here to deliver to you an informative webinar on CXL 3.0 and switch and introduce you to the major features of the TrueChip CXL BIP. So, let's start with the presentation. So, today's agenda will be followed in this order. Firstly, we will begin with CXL and CXL switch overview, then data flow and latency comparison, followed by CXL usage, and last but not the least, TrueChip CXL VIP and CXL switch VIP features and advantage. Let's start with TrueChip solution introduction. TrueChip solution is a leading provider of verification IP solutions and design services. We provide P3 framework that is proven solution, perfect integration and prompt support. We have R&D centers in India. We are provider of VIP for PCI, Ethernet, CXL, USB, storage, AMBA display and many more VIPs. Tuchi provides direct sales and support presence across North America, UK, Europe, China, Israel, India, Japan, Korea, and Taiwan. Now moving to the CXL overview part. First question that comes to mind is what is CXL? A CXL is a dynamic multi-protocol technology designed to support accelerators and memory devices for heterogeneous computing, which is provided with three these protocols, which can run parallelly on a single link and can improve the efficiency of data transmission. Here, CXL IO protocol is an enhancement to PCI transaction layer and link layer user used for initialization, link up, device discovery, enumeration and register accesses. On the other hand, we have completely new protocol for cache currency and memory access, which allow host and device to exist in the same address space and share the memory. The CXL cache allows the device to coherently access the host CPU memory, while the CXL MEM allows the host CPU to access the device as memory. CXL 3.0 support two types of data transmission in 68 byte and 256 byte thread structure. Now, let us quickly go through the basic architecture provided by CXL specification. The picture on the right side of the screen shows the layered hierarchy of CXL starting with the transaction layer then the link layer, and then the armux layer, and the flex bus layer. The transaction layer and the link layer is further subdivided into the separate IO components and a combination of CASI and MEM component. The decision to choose from CXL.IO or CXL.MEM and CAS is done at the CXL armux interface. The armux interface arbitrates between the requests from the CXL link layer and dynamically multiplexes them by using an arbitration logic. Finally, the data is transferred serially using a flexbus layer, which is nothing but the PC Express 5.0, 6.0 high level logical subblock and the PC Express electrical subblock. Basically, CXL differentiates the CXL IO and CAS MEM at Armux layer and dynamically multiplexes between them. CXL can be configured to work in PC Express mode or in the CXL mode. In PC Express mode, mode the, this Armux layer is bypassed and only CXL.IO is used. In the CXL mode, we have additional CAS and MIM or both protocols working. We will be overviewing the CXL switch in this slide. Its CXL hierarchy is defined by a virtual CXL switch within the switch so that a host is completely isolated from all other hosts. This is done by configuring internal virtual PCI to PCI bridges and binding them to physical PCI to PCI bridges that attach directly to CXL devices. There are three types of switches. A single VCS switch consists of a single upstream port and one or more downstream ports. A multiple VCS switch consists of multiple upstream ports and one or more downstream ports per VCS. A multiple VCS switch with MLD ports consists of multiple upstream ports and a combination of one or more downstream MLD ports. Let's discuss about some features of CXL starting with Fabric Manager. 
the fabric manager is an entity separate from the switch or host firmware that controls aspects of a system related to binding and management of pool ports and devices. Fabric Manager API is a standardized interface for the Fabric Manager to communicate with devices. As shown in this figure, the structure of CXL 2.0 that introduces CXL switch and multi-logical device makes a lot of sense when connect controlled by a Fabric Manager. The Fabric Manager sits external to the CXL switches and configures the internal CXL hierarchy within them. In favor of simplicity, CXL also provides a static configuration that doesn't require a fabric manager in the case where only single logical devices are present. The fabric manager can boot alongside the host or before them and execute changes to the bindings of physical devices to VCS in real time. In addition, the FM can take any form, including software running on a host machine, embedded software running on a baseboard management controller, embedded firmware running on another CXL device or CXL switch, or a state machine running with the CXL device itself. Using a standardized API, the Fabric Manager can send commands to logical devices, gathering information, error information, quality of service, and bandwidth information. In this slide, we will see the switching and memory pooling feature introduced in CXL. Memory pooling allows every host to access all of the memory that it needs dynamically on demand from a centralized large pool or from a set of pools. The memory pool may be composed under a CXL switch spanning multiple CXL devices. Each may be a multi-logical device providing different memory resources. As shown in the figure, host can access either a single logical device. For example, host H2 can access device D1. Or as shown in the second figure, host can access all of the memory that it needs on demand. For example, host H1 shown in the blue color can access device D1, D2 and D4 dynamically on demand. We will be discussing about CXL's hot plug support in this slide. Large systems with multiple hosts, switches and devices hold resources that can be provisioned on demand and require methods of connecting and disconnecting these resources. It doesn't make sense to turn off the system every time a new device is added, as it may require turning off a whole fleet of systems. Along with CXL switches and fabric managers, CXL introduces the concept of hot add and managed hot removal. As shown in the diagram, CXL supports managed hot remove. When the host receives a request from H1 to remove device D3, host H1 stops traffic from D3, indicating that the device can be safely removed. Then device D3 is removed from H1 and added to the pool. Similarly, CXL supports managed hot add. For example, if host H2 claims a device, the fabric manager allocates D3 through the switch and initiates a hot add flow. Adding D3 to H2 initiates normal traffic flow between host and device. We will discuss about the flow of memory transaction in PC Express in this slide. How the data is actually transmitted to and from host attached memory in case of PCI. As you can see from the diagram, memory management unit plays a role for maintaining the data transfers and the address translations and if there is any device for which the data needs to be coherent with the system memory, then multiple PCI Express memory reads and writes will be taking place. So, in that case, it will consume more, much latency of the system to maintain coherency using traditional PCI data flow. Thus, 
it will consume a lot of bandwidth to maintain the coherency for PCIe device, which needs to modify the host memory, while the non coherent IO devices rely primarily on standard producer and consumer ordering models and execute against host attached memory. For such device, there is only little interaction with the host except for work submission and signaling on the work completion bodies like providing the interrupts. Such accelerators also tend to work on data streams or large contiguous data objects. Let us take an example of NVMe Express or PCI Express. It can be considered one such IO device. But while taking into account accelerators, which needs to maintain coherency with host memory, CXL cache comes into account. In this slide, we will show latency comparison between PCIe and CXL. With experience in the PCI Express implementation and verification, we have observed that the time taken for sending a transaction layer packet to the remote transaction layer, which is working at 32 GT per second for PCI Gen 5, is around 45 nanosecond, while the same for CXL.CAS and MEM is around 24 nanosecond, working at 32 GT per second. Thus, CXL is faster than PCI and the latency is less in CXL. Here we will discuss about the CXL use cases. Based on the use of three protocols, there are three types of CXL devices, type 1, type 2 and type 3. Type 1 devices use CXL.io and CXL.cas protocols. The user example for the same is NIC that is network interface cards or smart NICs which can benefit from the CXL features. Uses for type 2 devices are GPUs and FPGA for dense computing. These devices have local memory attached to them which are basically used for their own computation and we expect these kind of devices to implement all the three protocols that is CXL.io, the CXL.mem and CXL.cax. Moving to type 3 devices the typical usage will be memory bandwidth expansion or memory capacity expansion where the device needs to implement the CXL.io and CXL.mem protocols. Here we have architectural block diagram of the ProChip CXL VIP. Here for showing you the different configurations of the ProChip CXL VIP, we have taken CXS, upper link layer, lower link layer architecture on the host side and CPI interface on the device side. Both interfaces can be used interchangeably between both components in all the four different configurations. Taking the example of this configuration, it starts from the top on the host side. Here we have the memories and the configuration space of the host. Then we can see the sequences here, which is basically a part of the VIP application layer. CXL upper link layer and lower link layer architecture is used to bypass the CXL transaction layer. So whenever any host sequence is initiated, it is driven to the VIP CXL upper link layer in case of CXL.cas or CXL.mem transaction and to CXL.io transaction layer in case of CXL.io transaction. Here on the upper link layer, a 512 bit field is formed that is driven onto the CXS interface. Our CXS interface supports both CXS link control property, that is, explicit credit return and none. Coming back to the transaction, it arrives onto the CXL lower link layer. Here, the 2 byte CRC is appended to the 512 bit thread. It is then sent to the ARMOX, where arbitration takes place between the CXL.io, CAS, and MEM transaction. Then the packet is sent to the physical layer for transmission over the CXL link. From the CXL link, the transaction is sampled by the receiving component, which is the CXL device, here as well as the ProChip CXL monitor. Coming to the CXL link, we can see that the VIP monitors reside here. The monitor resides on the receiver side of the link. So, whatever transaction is transmitted from host is sampled by the device monitor and transaction from device are sampled by the host monitor and all the appropriate checks are applied at each layer while following the CXL protocol 
CPI and CXS have their own interface level monitors. Along with the checkers, our scoreboard and coverage monitors are also present. Here to apply data integrity checks and calculate the coverage. Coming to the receiving component, the packet arrives to the CXL device physical layer and reverse process of the transmit side take place. Here the main difference is that we have used CPI instead of CXS. So coming to that point, after fleet unpacking at the link layer, the packet is driven to the CPI via CXL transaction layer. CPI maps both the CXL.cas and CXL.net protocols to a common set of wires. From there, the packet arrives on the device application layer where it is processed and appropriate response or data if required is generated for the CXL PLP and transmitted in a similar fashion from device to the host. Now let us talk about the TrueSIP CXL VIP features. Our VIP is compliant with all the specifications that is 3.0, 2.0 and 1.1. The IP verification IP is configurable as CXL host and device when operating in the flexbus mode and as PCI Express root complex and device endpoint when operating in PCI mode. The VIP supports all CXL protocols that is IO, CAS and MEM and all the types of devices to meet the specific application requirements with user configurable memory size for both CXL host and device. The VIP supports for 64 GT per second data rate for 256 byte fit. It also support for 32 GT per second data rate with backward compatibility. The VIP supports for alternate protocol negotiation for CXL mode. It also supports pipe specification 6.1.1 with both low pin count and sardis architecture. The support for CXL link layer retry mechanisms for 68 byte fleet is provided and the support for CXL link layer viral and poison mechanism for 256 byte fleet is provided. It also supports for the configuration timeout for all three layers. The VIP supports for the CXL 2.0 configuration and memory map registers for CXL device and boards. It supports for different CXL PCI initiates. The VIP support for CXL ALNB transmission and reception to control virtual link state machine and power state transition request. The VIP supports for CXL act forcing and link layer credit exchange mechanism for 68 byte fit. The support for arbitration among the CXL IO, CAS and MAME packets is available with interleaving of traffic between different protocols. Support for randomization and user controllability in fit packing is provided. The VIP also supports for power management including the low power L1 with substate and L2. It provides a comprehensive user API callback also and the VIP has built-in coverage analysis. Talking about the test counts, this slide shows the test count in the CXL and PCI. For CXL physical layer, we have 70 test cases, link layer have 117 test cases and transaction layer have 362 test cases. The number of test cases increases with increasing link width and different speeds. When the VIP is running in the PCI mode, the, all the PCI related test cases can be run and the number of test cases ha, can be seen in the slides. We have more than 15,000 test cases including CXL and PCI. In this slide, we show the coverage of our VIP. We provide 100% coverage with the TrueShift CXL VIP. You can see all the bins and the cover groups in the slide. All the bins have been covered to provide you the 100% coverage. We will now discuss the TrueI GUI based debugger. TrueI provides a graphic analyzer to determine the latency and packet transmission using a timeline. Along with that, it also provides a pie chart summary for proper distribution of different packets. TrueI can also be used to determine the bandwidth of the bus or the link at any time of the simulation.
Sochi VIP also includes a GUI based interface to debug and access the verification using loggers for transactions, bus utilization, etc. TrueEye consists of a GUI based debugger which is basically used to track and analyze the data packets at three layers for proper debugging. It has an interactive interface which allows the users to examine each and every packet along with all fields present in the packet at every layer. Here in the current picture, you can see an Armox layer logger where attributes for each fleet can be viewed in the selected transaction. We can see a fleet is transmitted from device to host at timestamp 45294.108 nanoseconds. Further in the right side, on the transaction details section, we can see all the information related to the fields such as the byte 0 of ALMP are as reserved, then message code as per the field size, then virtual LSM request status type of ALMP along with VLSM instance number fields as well and all the fields are shown there. Thus it makes debugging very convenient and faster. Here we have the architectural block diagram of Stochip CXL switch VIP that shows one of CXL switch upstream port and three CXL switch downstream port. But to chip VIP supports in a large number of CXL switch downstream port as per customer's requirement. To chip VIP supports for all three CXL protocols that is CXL IO, CAS, MAME and device types to meet a specific application. To chip VIP supports for 64 GT per second data rate with backward compatibility. Tuchi VIP supports for file specification 6.1.1 with both low pin count and service architecture. The switch VIP compliant, is compliant with CXL 2.1 and 3.1 specification. The Tuchi CXL VIP compliant, is compliant with CXL IO, CXL CAS main packets. It supports initialization using static method. The switch VIP supports single VCS switch support for hot add and hot remove for a CXL device. Now let us check how do we run CXL test cases with our VIP. Let's take a brief look at the demo run command first. Here using the minus F switch in the make command, we are pointing to the path of TrueChips make file, which resides in TrueChips CAD home. After that, in VIP argument, we pass the VIP name, for example, PCI or CXL. As we are running test case of CXL switch, here it is set to CXL. Then there is the test name command in line switch to pass the name of the test that is to be run. Here it is set to TCCXL switch sanity test. After that, we have the switch for CXL version to set the spec version to be followed for the current simulation, which is set to 2. Next, we have the switch for version to set the PCI spec version to be followed for the current simulation and it is set to 5. Then we have TC dump switch which is set to 1 to create dump file and QCon switch switch to set the number of error count. The value 10 here indicates that the test case should terminate after 10 UVM errors in the simulation. After that, we have ENV switch, which tells us the number of environments to be formed for this test case. At the end, we have simulators, lane number, speed EP and speed RC switch to set the intended type of simulation, lane number, speed of endpoint and route complex. Here, simulator is set to Q, which denotes Cresta sim. Apart from this, our VIP also has support for NC and VCS simulators. Let's run this command. When you fire the run command, the compilation starts. As you can see, the compilation has been started. First, it will compile all the files. It will take some time. In the meantime, Let's discuss the log file previously generated. As we can see, the files have been compiled first. The compiler will extract all the files from the package 
and compile first. After the compilation, you will see the hierarchy of the whole system with the switch, the downstream ports, the upstream ports, the root complex and the endpoints. It will show all the instances of the modules and the classes that have formed. After the system reset is deasserted, physical layer LTSL state enabled and transitions into detect.coil LTSM state where it waits for 12 milliseconds and then timeouts into detect.active state. In this state, both components perform receiver detection and if the receiver is detected, LTSSM state transitions to polling.active state. In this state, the component starts transmitting TS1 order state for all the links. From here, after receiving specified number of TS1 and TS2 order sets with required field values, LTSSM progresses from polling to configuration to L0 state for all the links. And the link up is done at Gen1 data rate. As you can see, multiple TS1 on TS2 it order sets are being transferred to all the links. The links start from 0 to 7. As we put the ENV value to 8. From here, it then goes into recovery state. Very recovery speed substate. It changes its speed to Gen3 data rate. Then after rate changing done. LTSM goes into recovery dot equalization substates for equalization process and after this LTSM gradually moves to L0 state. It will happen for all the states, all the links. It is moved from equalization to L0 as you can see in the logs. This process is repeated for Gen 4 rate and then for the Gen 5 rate change as it is visible in the logs. This happens for all the links at the link 0 there is a root complex and in between there is a switch. The switch is having a downstream port, a three downstream port and one upstream port. And in the, at the downstream port there are multiple endpoints. Now after this ARMX packet transaction begins. After 5 subsequent runs into LGL state, it enables ARM to begin its handshaking process to get into active state. The R proceeds by status synchronization of its VLSM state by sending its default reset status LMP from downstream port to upstream port, resulting in stable reset state for both CXL IO and CXL cache main VLSMs. After reset state, it now proceeds for active state for both IO and CASME by sending active request LMP followed by active status LMP resulting into active state of ARMUX. After our VLSM split into active state for IO and CASME, the IO and CASME operations can now begin transmissions of DLP, DLLP as well as the plates. We will now move on to the link layer part. After the link runs to the LGO state and R gets into active state, it notifies CXL cache main link layer to begin its initialization process. 
link layer sends wireless CRC clean retry control fields before sending any other fleet, hence sending only retry control fleets. This it will send multiple retry fleets so that a CRC clean retry fleet can be achieved at all the links. After both downstream port and upstream port receive CRC clean fleet, it sends init dot param fleet to exchange CXL versions as well as link layer retry buffer wrap value and later sending the LLCRD control fleet to exchange initial credits for normal protocol fleets operation. After this, the transaction layer related packets will start moving from one end to another. We are going to the VC installation process of all the links now. Here at line number 2157, it shows that the VC initialization process has been done for root complex. Similarly, VC initialization is also done for upstream port, downstream port, and endpoints. After VC initialization, we are going to do the enumeration of the VCI CXL switch and endpoints. In the enumeration process, there are following steps. First, we discover hierarchy. It's called DFS process. That means depth first search. After that, we are going to search capability ID of supported PCI Express base and extended capabilities. For this, there will be multiple configuration reads and writes will be transferred from one link to another. It will involve all the root complex, all the ports of the switch. The, the enumeration will consist of enumerating the downstream ports, the endpoints. It gonna read the every registers of the ports as well as the endpoints. It will configure the bars of registers of the CXL or PCA endpoint and base and limit register for the type 1 configuration space header of respective CXL or PCI ports. As you can see in the logs, multiple packets have traveled from the root complex to the switch of stream port to the switch downstream port and to the endpoint. And these packets consist of multiple configuration writes and reads. These have configured the registers of the CXL downstream ports, the upstream ports and the endpoints. And here you can see these prints are showing the bars starting and an address of the PCA component with respective VDF. Now after the, this, the enumeration has been completed. It will complete for all the links. May it be the link 0, the link 1, the link 2, 2 or 7. After the enumeration process, we are configuring the DBSEC capability register. Now, credit and PM initialization are processed. As you can check here in the logs, CXL power management vendor defined message are successfully transferred between the respective components. Firstly, credit return PM to IP and IP to PM VDM messages are exchanged between all the links of the CXL switch ports from host to device and vice versa. After that, agent info PM to IP and IP to PM messages are transferred between all the links of the CXL switch ports from host to device and vice versa. Finally, at the end of the test case, we have the test case report. Here we can see all the numbers of transactions transferred. We can see that a total transferred including the host to device and LCRD 
host to device retry plus host to device init is 29. It also mentions the separate separately for s 2 did LLCRD that is two number two total s 2 d retry is 28 and total s 2 d init is one. Similarly, the report comes from all the monitors at the end at the end we can see have we have 3179 um info zero um warning zero um error and zero um fatal in this way that we can see the test case has passed and it has enumerated all the ports of the Excel switch and all the endpoints below downstream ports of the switch. Now let's move on to the next test case. After running the Excel switch sanity on Excel version 2, we will run Excel sanity on Excel version 3 and with lane number 4. Let's run it. After running, the compilation will start and it will take some time and we have already we have run this test case and have the logs ready. We will look into the logs now. Like earlier, all the files will be compiled and due to version change from 2 to 3 and fleet mode negotiated is of 256 byte, the different initialization process will be taken in consideration compared to the previous test case. Now you can see the hierarchy is being displayed over here. After the system reset is asserted, the LT system state transitions will take place. It will now try to get the L0 state like earlier explained. It will move on from Gen1 data rate to Gen3 and then to Gen5 data rate gradually and ultimately achieve the L0 state so that other links can start its process. LG substrate has reached the L0. After this, the R mux of the CXL will start this process. After five successful trains into LG state, it enables ARPS to begin its handshaking process to get an active state. Since in CXL 3.0, 256 byte fleet mode format LMP fleet received is always error free from Flexbus as it removes CRC and forward error correction. Both VLSMs of CXL IU and CAS main are in default reset state. After reset state, it now proceeds for active state for both IU as well as CAS main VLSMs by sending active request LMPs from downstream port to upstream port, followed by active status LMPs yielding into active state of ARMUX. After ARP VLSMs get into active state, what CXL IU and CAS MAME operations can be begin? Its operation of transmitting TLPs, DLLPs as well as the fleets. After the link trains to L0 state and ARP gets its to active state, it notifies CXL CAS MAME link layer to begin its initialization process. Both upstream port as well as the downstream port will begin their normal operation by sending init.paramfleet indicating they are ready for protocol fleet transmission. After the link initialization, the enumeration process starts. As you can see, we send multiple configuration read and writes for the enumeration and it takes place as explained earlier. This request configuration reads and writes will configure all the bar registers, will detect the capability IDs for the endpoint. At last, in the log, you can see it shows the start and end addresses for the bar registers and the innovation process completes here. After the innovation process, we are configuring the DBSEC capability registers. Now, credit and PM initially are processed 
as you can check here in the logs. CXL power management vendor defined messages are successfully transferred between the respective components. Firstly, it is return PM to IP and IP to PM VDM messages are exchanged between host and device and vice versa. After that, agent info PM to IP and IP to PM message are transferred between host and device and vice versa. Finally, at the end of the test case, we have the test case report. The test case report comes from the all the types of monitor in the VIP. Let's look into one of the monitors. Print. As you can see, the CXL IO host TL monitor performance summary is there. We can see a total of three S to D VDM packets have been transferred in which one was host to device, agent info VDM packet and two S to D credit return VDM packet was transferred. In this way, we can see the performance summary for all the monitors. And at last, you can see we have 414 UM info, 0 UM warning and same for the error and the fatal message. At last, it shows the CXL sanity test has passed and the intention for the test case has met. We will now run a different test case showing CXL factors device to host right current capability on LAN 8. Let's run it. It is going to take some time. That's why we have already prepared the logs for this test case. Let us look into the log files. As previously explained, the log file in log file we can see all the files are being compiled first after the compilation we will see the hierarchy of the VIP being developed here and after the system reset after the system reset the altism state transition will take place and it will start the link training the links will train to altism state with data rate change from Gen 1 to Gen 5. We can see in the logs that the data rate is being changed from Gen 3 to Gen 4 and then from Gen 4 to Gen 5. After the link has been trained, we can see the prints from the Armux monitor as previously explained. All the state machines of Armux will run. It will go to the active state and after that we see initialization will start and it will ultimately start the enumeration process into the enumeration process multiple configuration reads and writes are sent to configure all the bar registers read the capability ids it has already been explained in the previous test cases once the enumeration is completed we can see the bar registers the start and the end addresses for all the bar registers soon and we can see the CXL related VDM packets will be sent from host to device and from device to host. At last we will discuss the intention of this test case. Now let's see the transaction flow of the CXL.cache transaction that was transmitted here. Write current request is transmitted from device to host on the D2H request channel, its CQ ID DC0X. In its response, host generate a good output message on host device response channel, after which device sends data onto D2H data channel with UQ ID 361 in hex which must have been present in the host to device response. This way, the disk intention has been met and at last the different monitors show the summary of all the transactions being done in the simulation. At last, we can see there were 417 UM infos, 0 warnings, 0 errors and 0 fatals and the test case has successfully passed and all the intentions for the test case have been met.
that's all in the presentation thank you for your time